Hello everyone. Welcome once again to the Gillespie's YouTube learning channel. In this unit specifically created for students of second form or grade 8 in Jamaica and maybe other parts of the Caribbean. The unit we will be looking at in this video created for social studies students as I said in form form 2 or grade 8 the unit we're looking at is nationalism and development nationalism and de development specifically we're going to be looking at nationalism and development in Jamaica. For those who don't know me, let me welcome you to this YouTube learning channel. My name is Derek Gillespie. I'm a teacher at Monroe College in St. Elizabeth in Jamaica. And I welcome you and I hope that as you go through this lesson, you will benefit tremendously from the information shared with you. Now to begin this topic, nationalism and development, let's look quickly back at the history of Jamaica as it developed as a nation from early beginnings until presently in 2021. Here we go. Um, leaves and straw. The island was spotted by Christopher Columbus. All right, let me start again. Here we go. This is the Caribbean, and here's Jamaica. Now let's Jamaica our way through its story, shall we? The third largest Caribbean island. Jamaica chilled alone in the cheerful sun for many years until its first inhabitants alighted on its sandy shores, though no one's exactly sure when this was, but at least 3,000 years ago. Those mysterious first arrivals were followed by similarly mysterious second arrivals, noted for their redware pottery. And then, around the year 800, the Taino people made the island home, cultivators of cassava and corn, who abode in villages of wood, palm leaves, and straw. The island was spotted by Christopher Columbus in 1494, and he declared it the fairest isle that eyes have beheld. If only the ensuing years in Jamaica were as sightly as its scenery. The Spanish took control and treated the Taino harshly in their insatiable search for riches. Forced labor and introduced disease decimated native numbers to the extent that Spain began importing fresh slaves from Africa. Enslaved persons who escaped their masters fled to the mountains and became known as the Maroons, a small beacon of liberty in an island of chains. Skipping ahead to the mid-17th century, we find Jamaica lumbering along with a population of only a few thousand, which made it easy pickings for the British, who snatched it from Spain in 1655. The British defended their prize, and Port Royal became a sort of rum-swilling pirate paradise for a while, Britain encouraging piratical pillaging of Spanish ports. After Spain formally recognized Britain's occupation of Jamaica, the British didn't need the pirates anymore and set about executing them again. Britain made a lot of money from Jamaica after importing many more more African slaves to toil on plantations of indigo, cacao, and most profitably, sugarcane. British forces also ended up engaged in fierce fighting with the Maroons in the island's interior, who scored several successes under leaders like Queen Nani with their proficient usage of guerrilla warfare. Another slave revolt followed, and on its heels, another war with the Maroons. Just in case it all wasn't clear enough, there was another slave revolt in 1831, led by Baptist preacher Samuel Sharp. Though unsuccessful, this was the age of the abolitionists, and freedom was in the air, and in 1834, slavery was finally ended across the British Empire. Unfortunately, life for the average Jamaican didn't get much better, and it was in protest over poor conditions and injustice that another Baptist preacher, Paul Bogle, arose to lead the Morant Bay Rebellion in 1865, which was viciously suppressed by Governor Edward John Eyre, who ordered Bogle's execution for high treason. But Jamaicans didn't stop in their efforts to improve their lot. Pan-Africanist, writer and activist Marcus Garvey galvanized crowds with his ambitious proposals. He would later inspire several figures in the American's civil rights movement.
Movement. In 1962 saw Jamaica achieve independence whilst remaining part of the British Commonwealth. Economic growth followed, then slumped in the latter 1970s before picking up in the 90s. And today the country has attained a high level of human development. And I think we can all agree there's something special about Jamaica. It stands out and everyone loves it and its influence on the world has been incredible. From Rastafari to Rocksteady to reggae music, immortalized by the great Bob Marley, to phenomenal athletes including the fastest runners in the world. Okay, so there we have students, a quick summary of Jamaica's background history leading up to the more recent times as the nation continues to strive to be a developed nation. So Jamaica, located in the Caribbean Sea among the islands of the West Indies, there we see it located south of Cuba and just to the west of Haiti. It is the third largest island in the Caribbean um, among islands called the Greater Antilles. Now, from the time of its national heroes and their efforts to help to develop Jamaica, there was a spirit of nationalism that developed among the people of Jamaica. And what we would like to do now is to look quickly at what we mean by nationalism. So I'm going to be highlighting on screen as I go along. Um, you can read, pause the screen and read and internalize the real meanings of the concepts. Now, nationalism, as you can see on screen, involves the pride the people of a country feel to be part of that nation, as well as all the efforts made by the citizens, citizens and the government of that country to make their nation stand out in the world. I repeat, nationalism involves the pride the people of a country feel to be part of that nation, as well as all the efforts made by the citizens and the government of that country to make their nation stand out in the world. Now, People feel a sense of pride when their nation does well on the global stage, such as, for instance, at the Olympic Games or in the World Cup football. Or they will do their best to promote the good name of their country abroad. Jamaicans make an effort to promote abroad the country's unique reggae music, its Creole language or patois, and of course, it's general heritage and culture so that tourists will want to visit the island and experience what Jamaica is all about. Jamaicans feel proud of what the flag of their nation represents. And they do much during Independence Day celebrations each year, August 6th each year, for instance, to promote a sense of love for one's country, love and devotion to your country we know to be what is called patriotism and Jamaicans try to encourage citizens of that country to feel individually responsible to contribute to the development of the nation. All of that is part of the spirit of nationalism. Now what does development mean? Now development of any nation involves a gradual improvement in the standards of living in the country overall, in whatever area of life. And apart from the contribution of Jamaica's national heroes and the national icons, which we have studied in an earlier unit, the contributions of all these, apart from these, since Jamaica's independence in 1962, the various governments, of course led by the People's National Party or PNP, or at times the GLP or the Jamaica Labour Party, the governments of Jamaica have done different things to further advance the quality of life of the Jamaican people and to promote its national development. All of this is what we call development of the country.
Now, continuing, let's continue the notes on screen. Jamaica's most comprehensive national development plan is called Vision 2030. Now, this plan is aimed at making Jamaica a fully developed country by the year 2030. And as its motto or slogan, this plan, it aims to make Jamaica, quote, this is what the slogan or the motto of the development plan is, Jamaica, the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. Now, continuing, let's look at quickly what the Vision 2030 National Plan is all about. Vision 2030, reading at the bottom of the screen. This is Jamaica's first long-term strategic development plan and covers the 21-year period, 2009, when the plan was established and executed and launched by the government of Jamaica all the way to 2030. It embodies the plan and processes for the realization of a collective vision of the nation's government. And of course, we will take a look now at a little more detail of what this Vision 2030 National Development Plan is all about. Vision 2030 Jamaica, the country's first long-term national development plan, is aimed at achieving developed country status by the year 2030. The plan has four main goals which outline what should be achieved for the economy, society, environment and governance. These goals are Jamaicans are empowered to achieve their fullest potential. The Jamaican society is secure, cohesive and just. Jamaica's economy is prosperous and Jamaica has a healthy natural environment. Through goal number one, Jamaicans are empowered to achieve their fullest potential. All Jamaicans are expected to fully develop their talents and abilities and use them in productive ways to build their lives and develop the country. This empowerment will take place across four main areas, health, education and training, social protection and culture. A healthy and stable population. First and foremost, starting with our people as the most important aspect of development, to have a healthy population. To make this a reality, policies and programs are planned to deliver a healthcare system that is affordable and accessible, with state-of-the-art equipment and competent and well-trained staff. Jamaica will increase its ability to fight diseases, infectious diseases like HIV, AIDS and malaria, and chronic and lifestyle diseases such as diabetes. This will assist efforts to increase the length of time someone is expected to live, from the current 73 years to 76 years. The size of our population is expected to be stable so that the country's population growth rate will be in line with its rate of development. World-class education and training. The vision for Jamaica is that all citizens are educated and well-trained by the year 2030. Emphasis is therefore being placed on all levels of the education system. At the early childhood level, more trained teachers are being employed to mold the little ones and steps are being taken to improve the learning environment. When these students transition to the primary level, the aim is to get them numerate and literate so they'll be able to function in the secondary school system. After completing five years of high school, students should be able to attain at least five subjects, including English and Mathematics in the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate Examination, CSEC for example, and transition to the tertiary level to pursue academic studies or focus on technical and vocational areas. Not everybody we know will be able to focus on straight academic, but we should provide them with the skills and the competencies so that when they go out there, they again can, you know, they can manage. 
Since the implementation of Vision 2030 Jamaica in 2009, much progress has been made in the education sector. In 2011, 71% of students who sat the grade 4 literacy test mastered the exam, up from the 67% in 2010. There has also been an increase in the number of spaces for students at all levels of the education system. The Jamaica Tertiary Commission is up and running and work continues on the national parenting policy. The parents need to ensure that they send their children to school and not only send their children to school, they provide support at home. Effective social protection. In order to achieve the first goal of Vision 2030 Jamaica, the country must also provide adequate social protection for all, including its vulnerable and most needy population. This will be done by ensuring that persons contribute to the National Insurance Scheme, NIS for example, and also participate in pension schemes. Vulnerable persons are children in low-income households, the elderly, persons with disabilities and the poor. Several programs have already been introduced to improve their quality of life. These include the Program of Advancement through Health and Education Path, which is providing income support to challenged households, the Steps to Work and Special Youth Employment and Training Programs. We seek to direct those persons to training opportunities that they, they could become self-employed, they could become entrepreneurs, or they could get a skill that would allow them to become employed. As for the disabled, through Vision 2030 Jamaica, they should have equal opportunity to an improved quality of life. Jamaica was the first country to sign the International Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. We have now drafted the RO National Disability Act, which we expect to be passed quite early. The Road Traffic Act has also been amended to allow some persons with disabilities to acquire driver's licenses and be able to drive. Authentic and Transformational Culture through Goal 1 of Vision 2030 Jamaica, all citizens will celebrate, promote and protect our history and rich heritage. Our core and transformational values such as honesty, respect, trust, forgiveness and discipline, for example, will be embraced by the society. Underpinning the plan is recognition that unless we have mindset change and reinforcement of those positive things that made, made us strong as a people and made us positive, then the plan is doomed to failure. Through the citizenship in education and civics programs in schools, the younger generation will be taught the core values. The family has to be restored as the cornerstone of society, providing the foundation for its members to be integrated into the wider society. Among other things, a number of museums and culture yards will be established to showcase the things that make us unique as a people. Our national brand, Brand Jamaica, will also be incorporated in all aspects of our social and economic development. The role of sport in national development will also be strengthened. Sport has a very strong economic component, but it's also a very strong social and um, even moral component to it in that it, it, it causes people to develop values that can be positive. And we want to integrate sport into all of our national development. Sports promote respect for each other's rights and build bridges across communities, churches, schools, and even across borders. Vision 2030 Jamaica through goal number one is bringing out the best in everyone, empowering Jamaicans to achieve their fullest potential. To learn more about the National Development Plan, call the Planning Institute of Jamaica or the Jamaica Information Service. Visit the Vision 2030 Jamaica Facebook page or vision2030.gov.jm. Join the vision. Let us all make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. All right, students. So there you have a breakdown of the first goal of the National Development Plan 20, Vision 2030 in Jamaica. Let me now share with you on screen um, a quick summary of the goals of the National Development Plan Vision 2030. Now, feel free to pause the screen and to ensure that you internalize, you memorize what the four goals of the National Development Plan are.
My advice is to pause the screen and to make written documentation of the four goals and what are the outcomes or the results of these goals that are expected. Remember the motto, the slogan, the watchword of the Vision 2030 plan? Jamaica, the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and to do business. That's the watchword, the slogan, the motto of the 2030 Vision 2030 National Development Plan. Make sure that you document and memorize the four goals and what is hoped to be achieved in terms of the outcomes. Now, as we come to the end of this lesson, let me remind you, dear students, that you have a part to play as a citizen of your own country. Of course, citizens are persons who are legal members of a country, either by birth or by what we call they become naturalized citizens. So they were foreigners, they migrated to the island of Jamaica, and they applied for citizenship through the government and by documentation they become legal members of the nation of Jamaica so you can become a citizen either by being a natural born or you can be a foreigner that migrated and settled down and applied for citizenship by the process of process of what is called naturalization each member of the society you dear listener as a student you have a part to play in contributing to the development of your nation. You have a part to play as you should exhibit the spirit of patriotism, love for your country and devotion to your country to do what you can, to do your part, to help to develop Jamaica and to make it stand out in the world so that you can be proud of your nation. Keep in mind the key concepts related to this topic. Nationalism, development, citizenship. Make sure that you know and can carefully define and explain these key concepts. Let me hope that this lesson was helpful and that you now know a little more about how Jamaica has developed and we now as a nation have a people who are proud of their nation exhibiting the spirit of nationalism everywhere we go. Proud to be Jamaican because we want our nation to be a country that we can be proud of. That's the spirit of nationalism as we work together, putting hands and hearts and minds to help to advance the nation of Jamaica to continue to hold its own on the global stage. Thank you for listening. Success to you as you study this topic.